what piece of history is deliberately being erased from existence? In World War II how France people in general were pretty okay and open to Nazi ideals. Under occupation shipping people to camps etc. But they pretty much rewrote the history glorifying the resistance force who were just a little group of individuals resisting Nazi occupation. Hey Rohingya is a very interesting one. They have been indigenous to the Rakhine state for centuries before being driven out in 2016. They were butchered and murdered, raped and expelled with all evidence of being omitted from Burmese records. They now are spread all across Asia where they are met with great hostilities and are currently globe hopping longing to return home. Also just the general fact that Burma has been in a civil war for the last 75 years in general. Feel like I hardly ever see anything on the news about it. Expansionist Japan and the atrocities they committed during the 1930s are completely skipped over in most school curriculum even though it was less than 100 years ago. I've always found that baffling. Oof I have vivid memories from a video I watched in high school of an elderly Chinese woman explaining very stoically that when the Japanese invaded her community the soldiers took her and assaulted her repeatedly, including, ostensibly for fun, sticking lit firecrackers in her vagina. Everyone seems to know about North Korea being a nasty place, but they forget the country that's fighting it out with NK to be worst in any given category, Eritrea. It's in Africa, across the strait from Yemen, and very not part of Ethiopia. Military dictator, the law is what he says it is, conscription, displacement, the works. But little corruption, see the law is what he says it is which means that anything he does is legal, and if anyone does what he doesn't want they've committed suicide. The radical politics of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., particularly toward the end of his life. In his writings and speeches, he was far more radical than what is conventionally touted. Corporations wrap themselves in MLK quotes on January 15th and April 4th, but I would imagine that if Dr. King were alive today, he would be horrified at the level of wealth that these private sector entities have accumulated while we continually fail to provide the basic necessities for human dignity, such as affordable housing and living wages. I also wonder if his anger wouldn't just be directed at wealthy corporate interests but at the many progressive special interests that promote idealistic solutions to satisfy their own self-righteousness but result in nothing for the people they are supposedly fighting for. I think his letter from the Birmingham jail is quite well known. First, I must confess that over the past few years I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace which is the absence of tension to a positive peace which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of good will is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. If anyone is more knowledgeable about the topic than me please correct inform me but from what I've picked up through podcasts and documentaries, the British and Irish governments are desperately trying to forget collusion in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. There's heavy accusations of collaboration between MI5 RUC and loyalist paramilitaries and the Guardi Irish Army and the Provisional IRA. But there's still a lot of people alive who would be compromised if all the information came out. Sweden tried to assimilate Sami people by outlawing their language in schools and outlawing yiking, traditional chanting, and drumming. Sami women were secretly sterilized by the Swedish government, and that program lasted until the 1970s. BTW secret sterilization without consent happened to Native American women at IHS hospitals in the United States through the 1970s, and in Australia to Aboriginal women as well. The secret police in communist Romania, the Securitate, who would arrest, beat and torture those who oppose the regime, and its numerous collaborators who stab their neighbors in the back for benefits. I feel like it's not talked about enough. Right now there are a lot of older people who were part of the Securitate who never got punished for their actions, you can just see them walking on the street. I met a group of police forensic scientists and their attached documentary filmmakers, collecting evidence for the first trial in Danube Delta. It will also probably be the only and last trial of the Securitate. The people who were torturing and killing dissidents live in the village and of course deny the atrocities, while villagers confirm they used to hear the screams coming from the prisons. Others have said Native American history, 
and that's certainly true, but I want to specify something important about this, their languages. Many tribes of selected tongues have only a handful of speakers left, and many of them are elderly and before too long, after they pass, these languages will be dead. It is extremely unfortunate that there's little to no effort to try to retain these languages, keep them alive, and keep them going for future generations, but that's unlikely. Probably within a few short years many of these languages will be gone forever. I'm thankful to live in an area where indigenous language speakers are running programs in tandem with local school districts to teach young, indigenous children the language of their ancestors. The Business Plot Yes, a group of powerful Wall Street types tried to raise an army of 500k men to take the White House by force, overthrow FDR and put a fascist government in his place. And yes Congress investigated it, under seal, and concluded the plot was real but never named the conspirators. Kinda like what's happening with Epstein. One of those conspirators was Prescott Bush, later Senator of Connecticut, father of President George H. W. Bush and grandfather of George W. Bush. Also he did a lot of banking for Nazi financier Fritz Tyson, before and during Tilda and after Tilda the war. Edit, dealings with Tyson were definitely before but perhaps not after the war. The bank's assets were seized and frozen during the war under the US Trading with the Enemy Act. The labor history of most of the world. People have little idea that things people today take for granted or even scoff at were fought for with blood. Those who brag about working long hours or laugh at safety regulations spit on their graves. Safety regulations are written in blood. Take the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire, for example. We have exit signs, keep stairwells unlocked, install fire sprinklers and smoke detectors, all because of incidents like this. Not erased but little known outside Alsace and Moselle, the story of the Malgré knew, in spite of ourselves. These are the people who, after the German invasion during the Second World War, had to fight on the German side, otherwise their families would be shot or sent to concentration camps. In my country there are some dark events in history that are kind of swept under the carpet because the reminder of these events brings so much shame. One such event is the experiments of Vipome. They wanted to experiment the process of teeth decay and sugar's effect on it. So they conducted these experiments in a mental institution where they offered nothing else than sweets, candy, sugar etc. to the people living there. The people in these experiments never consented to doing these, nor did they understand what it was they were doing. It resulted in these people having their teeth ruined for life. So the people conducting these experiments were abusing the people living in this institution. The Germans were never in the dark or unaware of the Nazi regime's intentions and plans. Nobody was fooled during the election, nobody was fooled during the war, nobody was in the dark about the harsh anti-Jewish policies. It was all very openly discussed, it's simply a victim's mentality meant to water down the fact that they were all indirectly complicit. The way they portrayed that Nazi father of the main character in Boy in the Striped Pajamas is horrible. No way the literal commander of Auschwitz wouldn't believe fully in the propaganda. And no way his son, or any German child at that time, wouldn't know who the Fuhrer was at age 10. Erk the author of the book got into an argument on Twitter with the Auschwitz Museum. In school, I was never taught about the Japanese internment camps, or how the government rounded up Japanese people here in the US and locked them up. I only learned about it when I went to a mechanic's shop and saw pictures on the wall. I asked and he told me how his family lost everything. Edit, since so many are saying they were taught about this. I graduated from high school 53 years ago. I'm glad it's taught nowadays. Unit 731 isn't widely talked about outside of internet forums. Japan has deliberately tried to obfuscate its atrocities in World War II, sort of using Germany as the big bad guy and hoping people don't think about Japan's activities in China and Korea. Largely they've been successful. Black on black and Arab on black slavery should probably put Arab on Arab slavery too as that one still happens. Like white people don't have clean hands and I'm not saying we do, but we bought the slaves off black people and Arabs but no one seems to talk about that. The eradication of French from Louisiana. It's never talked about at all in US history courses and it's only as of this past decade that Louisiana is bringing back French immersion schools and French theaters to try to repair the damage. At the start of the 20th century, it was estimated roughly 3-4 of all Louisianians spoke French as their first language. By the 1920s the state had banned French for reasons pertaining to seeing the specific dialect as being uncivilized and to make the state more like the others. Prior to this the Creole and dialect of French in Louisiana had been considered, 
savage and attempts to make them speak, proper French were being done. The tactics used to get rid of French were the exact same ones as used on the Native Americans. The state purposely imported people from surrounding states who couldn't speak a word of French and teachers who only spoke English were brought in. Students who attempted to speak French were punished via corporal punishment. By the 1960s less than half of Louisiana was French-speaking. Today, in 2024 it's less than 10% of the population. The state only unbanned French in the 80s, but by then the damage had been done. If you were born in 1900s Louisiana you were amongst the last generation who'd en masse truly be fluent in French or Creole, by the 1910s likely amongst the last to have some understanding. The 1920s to 1980s is half a century where you were forbidden to speak your language at all in public, or in schools. Many Louisianians stopped teaching their kids French because of the direction the state went and the language has nearly died off. This was an extremely unique part of American culture we let die. Thanks for watching. It's always fascinating to dive into the comments section and see what people have to say about history. Remember to leave a comment below with your own thoughts and don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Keep questioning and exploring the past, because ultimately, it shapes our present and future.